All right, you fuckers, enough of this video game collection bullshit. Let's get on to some reviews. Um, the first one I want to talk about today is Nightmare on Elm Street, the video game. This one that I have in my hand right here was released in 1989, which was two years after the movie that it was based on. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 and the Dream Warriors. It was developed by Rare Software, who was best known for the Donkey Kong Country series on the Super Nintendo. It was released by LJN, who was notorious in the late 80s and early 90s for releasing really shitty video games based off of movies that were popular at the time. Um, the Angry Video Game Nerd did a full-blown review of this game, which you can watch at Cinemassacre.com. So, I'm not going to waste my time with this one. There was, however, another Nightmare on Elm Street video game that was released actually around the same time that this guy came out. But this other one was released for IBM compatible PCs and the Commodore 64 video gaming computer. So instead of wasting my time with this other piece of garbage, we're going to take a look at this guy. This is the box to the second Nightmare game that came out, which released alongside the Nintendo version. This one was developed by Westwood Studios, best known for the Command and Conquer line of PC strategy titles, and published by Monarch Software, who is no longer with us. I like this title screen, with Freddy slashing through with his claws. Freddy also looks better too compared to his Nintendo counterpart. My favorite part of the game is right here, the characters. That's right, this game actually lets you choose from a stable of characters that were actually in the movie. This is Philip. And this is Jennifer. They both got killed in the movie before the characters found out about the whole uh, Dream Warrior thing, so they're not in the game. Freddy has already gotten a hold of Joey and is holding him captive, so you're left to choose from Kincaid, Kristen, Will, Nancy, and Taryn to go and rescue your friend. So after you choose your character, the game starts you off in this area. You're running around Elm Street at some filled-in chalk outline, avoiding Freddy while trying to find his house, which is distinguishable by its flashing yellow interior lights. One cool thing about this section is that in each game, the house is in a different location, which makes it a little more difficult because the streets are maze-like, and this way you can't start and just make a beeline right for the house. The game makes you hunt for it. Once you find the house, you are greeted by Freddy's mom, Sister Mary Helena, a.k.a. Amanda Kruger. She congratulates you on finding Freddy's domain and instructs you to find the rest of your friends. Only then will she teach you how to use your dream abilities. So basically that's it. You start off in Freddy's house and work your way down floor by floor into what I only guess is supposed to be Freddy's hell. And along the way you gotta save your friends so you can use their abilities in the final fight against Freddy. So. Here is the first level, the interior main floor in Freddy's house. I'm playing with Kincaid who has a tunneling ability that lets him bust through walls. Gee, just like he could in the movie. Not much in the way here for enemies except some wandering skeletons and walls of fire and shit like that. One thing that's always puzzled me though, is what the hell are these things supposed to be? Are these rugs possessed or something? That's what it looks like to me. What the hell? Anyway, all you're basically doing is running around collecting items and trying to find the ladder leading down to the next level as quickly as possible. Here's level 2. It looks pretty much the same as the last level, with the style of levels changing up every other one. This level is starting to get a little tricky. We still have the walls of fire, but now we also have spike traps that pop up out of the floor. Instead of skeletons, we got possessed wheelchairs. Hmm, I seem to recall these from the film too. You know, what is it about wheelchairs that make them scary? You had the runaway wheelchairs in this game, and the possessed one in the movie, and I believe that one Silent Hill game had possessed wheelchairs too. Strange. Here we go. A change of scenery for level 3. Instead of wooden floors, fires, and spikes, we get green goo flying ghosts, and swirling vortexes. It looks like a bunch of slimers got together and had an orgy. 
What is this, a Nightmare on Elm Street game or Ghostbusters? This level is as far as I've been able to get in the game. It's just a big square room with sectioned walls in the middle, making aisles to walk through. There's a lever on the wall on the far side that changes the position of the vortexes when you pull it. I don't get what the point of that is, since you can get wherever you want to go no matter where the vortexes are, but I still can't find the exit. Like I said earlier, there's not too much info out there on this game. Luckily I was able to find some screenshots of the rest of the levels, so this way I can at least show you what the rest of the game looks like. Level 4 is basically the same as level 3, just a little harder. Levels 5 and 6 give us new surroundings. We're treated to graded catwalks that look like the one in the movie that spirals down in a Freddy's domain. There are firewalls and spike traps to avoid as well as a new threat. Black holes in the grating that open up and swallow you whole. There are also some button pushing puzzles thrown in to keep things interesting. Levels 7 and 8 take us into a new area. The ice caves. Electric beams and more black hole pits are your main obstacles here. These two levels got some nice little touches to them. There are bloody footprints around, snowmen that wear Freddy hats, and skeletons buried in the ice. Level 9, the last stage. The game throws you in a Freddy's boiler room. On your journey here, you've hopefully collected Freddy's hat, his glove, and a crucifix. You're supposed to place these three items in designated spots around the level to draw Freddy out for the final showdown. Freddy appears as a giant red and green snake wearing his fedora hat. He fires bullets or something out of his mouth, which you have to dodge and then quickly move in to get a hit or two in. After repeating this a few times, you win the game. There's weapons and health power-ups scattered around that you can pick up, and along your travels, you can also pick up gold coins that you can use in later levels in the vending machines to buy health power-ups and more hardcore weapons. My only real gripe with this game is the sound, or lack thereof. I mean, there's this like weird pulsing heartbeat noise that continuously goes on in the background, and there's like some weird thud noise when you attack something or get hit. But other than that, there's really nothing at all to the game. No music or nothing. The Commodore 64 version of this game, during the, uh, the start screen, and when the levels are loading, there's the Nightmare on Elm Street theme song that plays. But, uh, you know, the version that we're playing here for the uh, computer doesn't have any of that. Alright, there we have it. A Nightmare on Elm Street the video game for the Commodore 64 and the IBM compatible PC. Besides the shitty sound that was in the game, which is probably more attributed to the hardware that it came out on than the game itself, it was a pretty decent game for the time that it came out. It's a lot better than this piece of shit. Let me tell you. Um, if you like Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, it might be worth checking down if you're really into Freddy Krueger and horror games in general. But, um, well, I guess that's it. This is the fat guy game insane. Grab your controller, grab a beer, have a blast. <laughs>